Hey everyone, it's me, Coffee Stitcher. Uh, Thursday, October 29th. This is my one year floss tube anniversary. So for a year, I've been doing these videos, and I want to thank everybody out there for watching over the last year. It's insane to me a little bit that there's that many people that want to watch me and that I've made these videos for a year. Um, but it's pretty awesome, I think. Um, so thank you to everyone who has come along on this journey with me. Um, thank you for your support. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for your kind words. Um, I, I really do appreciate them. Um, so thank you. Um, this is also the 10 year anniversary of my meeting Carol Channing, which is also pretty damn exciting. Um... All right, so we've got the usual, the whip updates. Um, my Just the Threads came in on Tuesday, um, and I didn't want to show it off then because I wanted to make sure I had enough for this video. Sorry, I realized something had fallen. Um, I've got the Last Wicked Witch feature. Um, I have the Halloween tag that Julicious posted. Um... And I think that's kind of it. Um, originally, I was going to go back because I thought the Know Your Needleworker tag had more, like, in-depth questions than it did. Um, so I was going to redo it again um, to sort of see what had changed over the last year of Floss Tube. But it really hadn't. So I was like, well, that's a good idea that's not going to really pan out. Um, okay. So first we'll do the Halloween tag. How do you like your Halloween entertainment? Cute and fun or super scary? Both. Um, I really love silly, scary things like Hocus Pocus or early Tim Burton. Um, you know, things like the Charlie Brown. It, it's, it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. Stuff like that I really love. But I also like the scary stuff. Now, I draw the line. I don't do, like, the quote-unquote torture porn. Um, I don't like that sort of thing. I do like slasher movies, but I don't like the over-the-top gory ones. I don't tend to go for the things with, like, zombies. Um, I tend to be more about, I guess, really serial killers, which I know sounds kind of weird, but... And really, there, it's only two specific franchises, but we'll come to that. Um, Or things like Psycho, oh, like the, the Alfred Hitchcock sort of suspenseful scary, more than like blood, guts, and gore, and over the top, and torturing people, and the those things like paranormal activity, I don't find scary at all. So, but I really, a lot of it, I the, a lot of my favorite is the cute scary, sort of like the Charlie Brown and such. Um, what is your favorite Halloween candy, Smarties? I love chocolate, don't get me wrong, but I freaking love Smarties, Sweet Tarts, Bottle Caps, all that stuff. It's my favorite. Which actually is not entirely true, um, because that leads into the third question. Candy corn, love it or hate it? I love this stuff. Unfortunately, candy corn is made with honey. I'm allergic to honey. Which explains why when I would be eating bagfuls of it, I was vomiting everywhere. It wasn't because I was eating so much candy corn. It's because I was actually allergic to it. But, oh, do I love candy corn. So candy corn really is my favorite candy. But because I can't have it, Smarties, Sweethearts, Bottle Caps. Sprees, if they're the hard sprees, I don't like chewy sprees. And that seems to be all you can find anymore. But the chewy ones have that, this weird taste to them. I'm not wild about. What's your favorite scary movie? Or Halloween-themed movie in general? Well, I have a lot. Uh, Hocus Pocus being one. Of the scary movies, and unfortunately I don't physically have them here because they're over at the uh, at my, my better halves. Um, I love the Halloween series. The Halloween franchise and the Scream franchise are my two favorites. The Halloween franchise, because until it went off into Crazy Town, somewhere around 5, 6, um, because they're just, 
they're creepy and atmospheric, and they aren't overly gory. Then 5 and 6 got really gory, and then they pulled it back for 7, and then 8 was just a hot mess, and then they rebooted them, and I choose to ignore that the reboot ones don't exist. There were no reboots. I am curious about this upcoming sequel, but I really love the original Halloween. Uh, and if it says anything about its gore level, it's mild enough that with only a little bit of recutting, they were actually able to show it on network TV. Like, NBC showed Halloween in the early 80s. Um, and, well, yes, it didn't really start the genre off, um, because Black Christmas and... The Town That Dreads Sundown, and Psycho, and Peeping Tom all predate it. I think Suspiria might as well, but Suspiria's its own sort of thing. Um, Halloween was really the first one that really took off. Um, although The Town That Dreads Sundown is certainly very creepy. Um, Black Christmas, not so much. Although it's kind of fun, because it's Olivia Hussey and Andrea Martin and somebody else who's kind of famous, but I forget who. Um, so it's kind of a hoot. Um, but I really, I, I think overall, the Halloween films, what makes them so scary is you don't know the motivation. Why is Michael Myers doing this? Why, why is he there? And it's all filmed with shadows, so it's very suggestive. So if you are someone who's easily scared, you can sort of put in what happens. Um, you can put in the amount of violence you choose. Um, whereas with later ones, it was more about the body count and the splatter factor. Um, but I really love Halloween, and I actually like Halloween 3. If you take out the fact that it, if you take away, took away Halloween 3 from the title, it would be a relatively decent mid-80s horror suspense sci-fi movie that probably would have gotten a little bit of love along the same lines as things like The Stuff. Um, but because they put Halloween 3 on it, that, that tanked. Because it has nothing to do with Michael Myers. And really, it's not terrible. It's really not scary. Um, and then 6 is a joke. Oh, well, I say that. 6 is not a total joke. If you watch the producer's cut of 6, or even the theatrical cut of 6, it's not bad. 8. 8 is the joke. It's best left unsaid. Um, but I do really enjoy the Halloween films. Um, and then Scream is my other favorite franchise. Um, partially because I was just, I, I remember Scream coming out and being a big deal. I didn't see it because I was really freaked out by scary movies as a kid. Um, and so I didn't see it until I was out of college and I, thought it was brilliant. Um, I love the way it satirizes the horror genre and the slasher genre and is so meta and it, it, I think they're just brilliant films. Four, not as much. Um, I know three has its detractors, but Parker Posey basically makes that entire movie. Um, but one and two, I think, are really fantastic. Um, so I also like The Shining. Um, I like Carrie. Um, Young Frankenstein, Hocus Pocus, I think I said that already. Um, so I do, I, I do like horror movies, um, but my favorite is probably either Halloween or Scream. Those are probably my two favorites. So, um, do I have a yearly Halloween tradition? <laughs> um, not really, no. Uh, obviously, growing up, it was trick-or-treating. Um, in high school, there was always a theater party. In college, there was usually some sort of party. Um, and then I graduated from college and started working at Starbucks. And for the last five years, every Halloween, with the exception of the year I went to Disney World, I had to be working on Halloween night so that I could set up the Red Cups so that people can have their frickin' peppermint mochas and gingerbread lattes and Red Cups. So, all of you people who go out on that, on November 1st, and get your, which peppermint oak is year-round, but get your, your holiday drinks, particularly that stupid eggnog latte, and you want those red cups, just remember, you are depriving a Starbucks manager of their Halloween. And really and truly, for most Starbucks managers, that's our bigger, that's the biggest holiday for us. Um, 
yes, we love Halloween. So this year, I was going to be going out of town. We're not now. So now I think we're basically just going to stay in and watch movies. Um, we may go out and do something. I don't really know. I We haven't really discussed everything in full. Um, I know he's never seen Psycho, so we're going to watch Psycho because everyone needs to see Psycho. It's a brilliant movie. Um, so, no, not really any traditions. Um, I used to, I would generally, because I was work, it would have to work it, I would watch my scary movie marathon, and I would do Hocus Pocus, Halloween, Scream, Sons of the Lambs, and, um, I used to joke I never did it, but I used to joke and Showgirls, because that's the scariest movie ever. Um, um, so no, no Halloween traditions. So tomorrow at work we are having a um, breakfast, so I'm bringing a cake. It is a Funfetti cake, two layers. You ice it with chocolate, and then you stand Kit Kats up around it, and then you fill the inside center part with M&Ms. So I'll be I'll be doing that. Um and I'm dressing up as Harry Potter. So that's the only real plan there. All right. Um favorite or most memorable Halloween costume. Oh, there have been several and I need to see if I have a picture of one as I think about it. Um See my first Halloween costume was a bunny rabbit. Um, I was just barely over six months old because my half birthday was the 28th. Um, the so there was that. Um, let's see. There was one year I went as a red as a devil and was slightly stained red. So. That was, I guess, kind of funny. Um, one of my favorites, if these pictures will load, if these pictures will, ah, I thought I had one. One of my favorites was, and I quote, as a ghost with a pumpkin on my head to scare my neighbor, Miss Barbara. Um, so there I am. I was about three and a half, maybe. Ghost with a pumpkin on its head. Um... I was a vampire several times. Um, one of my favorites in high school was we, me and my then best friend Haley. We went as Ghostbusters and we built proton packs out of upside down trash cans and backpacks and random things we found around the house. That was and super soakers. That was a pretty kick-ass costume. Um, I went as Ursula my first year of college and ended up really looking more like Anna Nicole Smith. Um, I went as the Wicked Witch of the, the West and stained myself green by mistake. That was a fun costume. Um, I went as Ariel one year. That was a mixed idea. I was wearing glasses because of an eye infection, so I looked a little odd. My wig was too heavy, so my real hair was showing. Um, and it went from being a very pleasant 75 degrees to a very not-so-pleasant 40 degrees over the course of about an hour. So we walked out of the, the student center to go back to the dorms, and it was 45, and I was wearing basically nothing. Um, that one wasn't so much fun. I was Waldo one year. That was fun. I've been Harry Potter a couple of times. He's kind of my go-to because it's easy. Um... So, probably the the two most memorable were really and truly, well, top three, Ghostbuster, Wicked Witch, Ghost of the Pumpkin on My Head so I can scare my neighbor, Miss Barbara. Um, let's see. A Halloween-themed cross-stitch pattern. Well, you can't go wrong with the Master and the Macabre. Um, I would also highly recommend, um, I did really, with the exception of some of it, I, I would go with, with Mysterious Halloween Town, if you really like the cute Halloween. Um, Murky Manor is a cute pattern. I haven't worked on it forever. Um, any of the Mirabilla witches or fairies. 
Yeah, but definitely Master in the Macabre. So, all right. Um, I guess the next thing is going to be my Just the Threads, which this one was all sort of folly colors. Um, I got Cruel Wool in Sweet Potato from Weeks Dye Works. And I do love working with the wools. Um, a Thread Gatherer, which is actually made from Kid Mohair. I don't really know what that means exactly. And all I hear in my head is mohair shoes. I, I see mohair and I go, She's got electric boots, a mohair suit, you know I read it in a magazine. You know, Benny and the Jets. Which for a long time I actually thought the lyric was, She's got electric boobs. Um, and I didn't think twice about it because that made sense. Apparently. Um, but this is Tuscan Olive. It's a very nice olivey green. It's a little more yellow than I think it's showing on here. Um, I got a Karen Collection Water Lilies. This is the color 1131. I don't really know what color it is, but it's a chocolatey brown. So, and the water... Oh, no, this is Wildflowers. This is cotton. Um, it actually feels... It's single strand, so it feels a little bit more like a pearl cotton, I think. So, um, then a Dinky Dyes Antique Mauve, which is a nice purple. Um, and it's a little more red than mauve. It's not quite dusty enough to be mauve, but it's still very, very pretty. And I like it a lot. Liz really does a damn good job picking these threads for me. It's like she's inside my head. Which may or may not be comforting for her. I don't quite know. And then, finally, a limited edition Gentle Arts. And it's a green-brown. It looks a little bit like Irish Countryside. It may be Irish Countryside. But I like it. And if it is Irish Countryside, I'm glad to have more of it. Um, so, and I... Just so you not think I'm randomly throwing these out to the side, I have my floss bucket right there. So I'm tossing them into my floss bucket. Um, there's another little bit that I will show you momentarily. Um, all right, whip updates. Uh, so I did a little bit, a little bit more on octopus. I got one shell done, so tonight I'll finish up the back stitching, and then I'll be down to two. Um, so I'm hoping to get that done tonight, so that way after I come back from the weekend and I finish up Scream House, I can launch right back in, do the last two, bead the thing, and I'm done. Um, I don't know what I'll do after that in November. There's a couple of things I could work on, but this is the main goal in November, is to finish this thing. Um, so that's the whip update. I guess next is the last piece of Wicked Witch October. Now, this is a piece that I wanted for a very, very, very... Another one that I really wanted for a long time. Um, I remember seeing the ad for it in Parade Magazine when it came out, and it's from the Franklin Mint. And there's several in the series. This one was the first. But it's the Wicked Witch and her Black Magic Ball. I'm trying to be very careful with this. Um, I ended up getting a very good deal on it. But there she is, in all her dramatic wonder and glory, with a crystal ball that's a snow globe. So there are the four friends skipping down the Elbrook Road as the Wicked Witch watches on. Um, she, It's a little difficult to come by these, because they just weren't made as much, because it was towards the end of Franklin Mint's license. Um, I like the vast majority of the Franklin Mint Oz collection, with the exception of those dolls. The dolls are not okay by me. But the rest of the series of the stuff is. So I'm slowly trying to piece all of that together. Um, but these are made towards the end of their license. And one of the, the big issues is, as you can see with her little, her fingers, they're tiny. So you find her often with broken fingers. So I was really thrilled to get her without broken fingers, for obvious reasons. So, but this is just one of my absolute favorite pieces, and I love the dramaticness of it, um, and I love the detail. Like, they, it's really one of their more detailed pieces. 
Um, other nice Franklin Mint pieces that I have include the 50th anniversary porcelain figurine set, which you'll see pieces from sporadically. Um, and when I first show that off, there will be a story to go with it. Um, so there's that. Um, some music domes um, that I have. I know there's there's a set of eggs out there. There are more figurines. Um, there's, I think, a clock. There's a carousel. There's a handful of things out there. So it's, it's slowly but surely being pieced together. So, yeah. And I guess, oh, that's right, I have a finish. I do. Um, as you all know, I was waiting for one floss from Liz, because she wanted to try something out, because I did 35 counts. And it came. So first, I need to do a little bit of bragging slash raving. Um, it's a mixture of alpaca and silk. It's called Moonless Night. It's not going to show up too well, I think, here. It's mostly blacks and gray. It's black with some gray running through it. This stuff is some of the best stuff I have ever stitched with. It's easy to use. It looks gorgeous. It's super soft to the touch. It's fantastic. So, a little bit of bragging of neener, 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 I got to test run it, tee hee hee. Um, and a little bit of when she, if she does decide to move forward and do more in this, I highly recommend this to y'all. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and say what I've said a few times in other places, but I'm going to say it again. If you're not using her flosses, or you haven't at least tried them, you're really, really missing out. Because her qual her stuff is really amazing. Um, it's, it's just so beautiful and so wonderful. And as people have commented when they see the raven, that, yeah, I picked the colors. But its gorgeousness is because of Liz. It's because of how good her stuff is and how beautiful it is and how well it works. Um, so I cannot rave enough about her stuff. And while I'm not saying that using her stuff won't make you a millionaire. Wait, no. I'm not saying that using her stuff will make you a millionaire. But I'm not saying it won't either think about that. But here we have, at long last, because this literally took me close to a year. Literally. One year. I started this in the second week of November last year, and I finished it in the last week of October. So almost a year. But here is the Master and the Macabre. Um, I noted on my blog, because I finally updated my blog, uh, what all of my different color changes were. Um... But here it is in full. We'll start at the top. Ta -da! Um, so some of the things to note change-wise, I think I mentioned this already, but in case I didn't, um, I did the bottom, I did his name in uh, raspberry jelly, rosemary jelly from a uh, silk mill. Um, and as somebody was that? I think it was Jerry said? I think it was Jerry Phillips who said, gee, Garrett, could you have used any more flosses with this? And the answer is yes, I could have. But that's okay. Um, but here we have in close-up the raven. The raven is done with Moonless Night, and the alpaca silk blend with crushed berries and flambeau, all from Dragonfly Lotus. Crushed berries and flambeau are, sil are solidly silk. Moonless Night is the only hybrid. Um, I actually only did half stitches with the two silks, um, with the exception being any of the stitches that were the last one on a row that were exposed. Um, because I needed that last little tip to be, make it look full. Um, and then I used a Mill Hill bead for the eye. So there we have it. 
at long last, a completed Master in the Macabre. So I'm going to try and go out this weekend and see if I can find a frame for it. Um, but, yeah, it's very weird that it's over. So, anyhow, I think that's it for me for tonight. Um, I will not be here Sunday. Um, that was kind of why this video happened today. Um, but I will be back the following Sunday um, with my new theme for the month because I didn't come up with one yet. So, anyhow, I hope everyone's doing doing great. Um, thank you again for watching me for a year. Um, I rewatched that first video the other night because I was curious to see what might I be able to sort of emulate or do again. Dear God, was that a nightmare. My phone was going off and it was all shaky and I turned the lights out. I just, and then I picked up cue snap pieces and started playing with them and hitting them together. I was a total spaz in that first video. I don't know how anyone was able to put up through that first video enough to wa be willing to watch a second, but thank you, sincerely, all of you, for it. And I will see y'all later. Um, I hope everyone has a really great week.